my heaven on earth. I get to come up here and, and, and be me. Everything just kind of falls into place when you're here. Instead of getting up every morning at five to start your medicines and drugs and feeds before you go and do your own work, there's somebody here who'll do that for you. It's like an extension to your family, I think. One big family. It brings another life to you then you're not focused on one child. It's good to get away and just have a break and do what you want. And it's really fun. The Children's Hospice Association Scotland, or CHAS as it's affectionately known, was formed in 1992 by a small group of passionate parents and professionals who simply wanted their own Scottish hospice and to raise awareness of the needs of children and young people with life-limiting conditions. At the time, there was no facility in Scotland to help families and, of course, the children and young people themselves. Today, Chas runs all three of Scotland's children's hospice services, Rachel House in Kinross, Robin House in Balloch, and the Inverness-based Chas at Home service, which offers invaluable support to families in their own homes in the Highlands. But what exactly do we mean when we talk about life-limiting conditions? And since we're talking about CHAS here, what does a children's hospice actually do? A life-limiting condition is where a child is unlikely to live to adulthood and there is no reasonable hope of a cure. We're talking about anyone up to the age of 16. Now, there are also conditions where treatment aimed at cure is available, but a significant proportion of these children or young people may die before adulthood. The needs of children, young people and their families in this position are many and varied. It's worth remembering that children, especially young children, will often have slowly progressive conditions which require ever-increasing nursing and personal care, as well as having complex medical problems. We offer a palliative of respite care to children with life-limiting conditions and we try and work with the, family, the whole family. So we offer respite to parents grandparents as well as the children the children who are unwell and it's for this very reason that the services provided by Chas are so vital to literally hundreds of families throughout Scotland who have had to come to terms with their child's life limiting condition or illness families like this one I've been coming to Rachel House since the, the very day it opened and before um, myself my husband and our two sons at the time, we only had the two, the two boys have been um, coming, both boys have Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Gary was very young, he was only 13 when, when, when he died. And he always said to us, I want to come to the hospital, you know, I don't want to, because he had been through a sort of stage of hospital. And as soon as he got into the hospital, I think the staff at the hospital were sick of him because he was like, I want to go to the hospice. And it was just a phone call and we were here. Um, and we had a week here, um, we had a bad weekend with Gary and we came in on the Monday. And when you come in and you think, you know, you've got yourself prepared, this is, this is it. Only to be mortified when you see your son who was sort of death's door when you arrived to be zooming about in his wheelchair and you're thinking to the staff, oh, he wasn't like that this morning, he was really not well. And they're going, it's okay, this is normal, you know. And the whole process, I think, from, from coming in on a Monday to I'm being really high and then I'm eventually dying on the Friday, they were, they were fantastic. You know, it was like you take your own time and be with them. Like when, once Gary died, I was allowed to take him and bath him and put him into the clothes that he picked um, and then take him round to the Rainbow Room, which Gregor was allowed to go and get pictures, you know, go through all the archives of some staff and get pictures of kids that meant something to Gary from the hospice and uh, put them up and pick his music that he wanted played. You know, it was just everything that you probably wouldn't have done if you'd been at home. Can you imagine the immense practical and emotional strain that caring for your seriously ill child brings? Rachel House and Robin House offer support by providing first-class care for the child, while at the same time giving families the opportunity to relax, recharge their batteries and have a break. Both hospices offer short planned breaks for the child or young person, as well as their whole family. It's just a, such a brilliant place. It actually lifts your spirits um, when you come here. You know, you might come in and think, oh... You know, everything's going so bad, but you actually leave the place with a smile because it's, it's just fantastic. I think people think of hospices as being very sad and depressing. And, and the children here are, you know, a, a severely ill. A lot of them are severely disabled. But it's actually a really, really happy place to be. It's quite demanding looking after their children um, with the conditions that they have. But all of us here at Chaz are able to provide that support. 
Rachel House and Robin House are purpose-built to provide home-from-home -home accommodation for up to eight families at any one time. Parents come to stay because it's one-to-one -one care. Um, their child's looked after 24 hours a day. Um, it gives them a chance to recoup and recharge their batteries. The care staff do what the parents want them to do, and the parents really can relax. You can imagine, you know, going shopping, if you've got a disabled child with oxygen and various things, it's very difficult. So, I, I can't commend it highly enough. It was good to know as well that when I come in then with the boys that I could have my rest. I didn't, I, I got like the weekend off from my normal physio, turning them at night, you know, toilet and having to brush their teeth, you know, just do all that, everything you do every day. And it's just nice then to spend time with my husband and there are two girls. And knowing that, you know, Gregor now, Mrs. and Gary at the time, were getting cared for. Caring for a child or a young person with special needs isn't easy and it isn't cheap. A normal family would never have access at home to the expertise and the purpose-built facilities at either hospice. For instance, this snoozlin room is designed to give sensory stimulation in a safe, relaxing environment, so you can see why it's become a firm favourite with everyone. But the equipment isn't readily available. Both hospices offer a range of professional expertise, such as nursing and medical care, including pain relief and symptom management. This jacuzzi at Rachel House and the hydrotherapy pool at Robin House give a supported form of exercise for those children or young people who may spend the majority of their time in wheelchairs or be bedridden. It's also fun. Let's remember we're talking about kids here. Children and young people need to play and let their hair down. And children with life-limiting conditions are no different, except that they often need special facilities to explore their environment and to challenge themselves in the same way that every other child and young person takes for granted. Anyone with a child or a young person of their own knows that children of different ages have very different likes and dislikes, and the children and young people using Robin House and Rachel House are no different. So both hospices have all the bases covered. Both hospices offer lots of activities such as the chance to get involved in making music, creating art, or going on trips like to the cinema or to concerts. It really depends on what the children and young people themselves want to do. The aim of CHAZ is to make sure that all the children and young people who come to stay enjoy their time here and have many happy memories shared with their family. The emphasis is on the positive, the here and now. It's about making the most of whatever time is available. You could say that CHAZ enables the families here to create precious memories. As the end of a child or young person's life approaches, care staff at either hospice will work alongside staff at home or in hospital to ensure that everything that can possibly be done is done. And Chaz is on hand for the families usually from the day of referral and for as long as they need them. The death of a child is something that affects each family differently and as long as the family needs support, even after the child's death, Chaz is there. The care team often work hand in hand with social services and extend spiritual and emotional support to those that want it. Chaz also are always there 24 hours a day so that families can phone any time, day or night. And Chaz can provide emergency care at either hospice or in the child or young person's home. All this requires an immense investment in terms of facilities, but also in terms of staffing. For a charity like Chaz, the level of the support they provide would be impossible were it not for volunteers. Volunteers can be of any age or walk of life. Some are young people still at school, others are unemployed, retired or taking a career break. Many more are in full-time employment. But what all CHAZ volunteers have in common is endless enthusiasm. They want to help, to share their skills and to make a difference. I decided to become a volunteer uh, after I, I retired from full-time employment and I had a bit of time on my hands. When I was born, my mother was told that I wouldn't live to see my first birthday and I've had a fantastic life, so I want to give something back. I think I was uh, very unsure about what a hospice, children's hospice would be like, very apprehensive about the thoughts of it. But as soon as I crossed the, the door, just the... Uh, the whole atmosphere of the place hit me and I realised what a wonderful place it was and wanted to be very much part of the whole thing. It's a great satisfaction being able to help children and their families and also to work with the staff here because it's a fantastic environment to work in. The volunteers are so humble yet their contribution is invaluable. They support CHAZ by raising awareness of what they do and they raise funds. 
Chaz has a belief that every single volunteer, like a pebble thrown into a pond, creates a ripple in his or her community. And that ripple leads to increased awareness and support for Chaz. We have volunteers who come into the house and work with us in the kitchen, in the front office. We have volunteers who do the cleaning for us and help us in very many ways. An enormous amount um, is contributed by volunteers and we couldn't do without them. I myself work closely with the young befrienders, young people that come in from local high school to support our young people. They are an amazing bunch of young people that are inspirational to me and they join me both working with young people within Rachel House and within the community. We couldn't do our job without their help and support. As a volunteer in here at Rachel House, I built up confidence within myself, which is, was not one of my um, strong points before coming here. I think I got a tremendous amount of enjoyment out of it, um, having met so many families. I have a fantastic admiration for the families. Housekeepers, cooks, volunteers, administration staff, care team members and visiting GPs all play a part in looking after every child and young person and his or her family. There is no typical hospice person. Everyone has different skills and contributes to the hospice in a different way. And the result is quite tangible and dynamic. The hospice services are free to children and families who need it. And the cost of providing that service is very high. So where does Chas get funding? We get some funding from Scottish health boards and local authorities. But the majority of the money that we get is from the public and also from sales in our charity shops. It's very empowering to think that we, as individuals, can really make such a big difference. But it's also quite daunting too, especially when you consider that Chaz needs more than £5 million each year to run the hospice services. Isn't it amazing to think that almost everything that you've seen here has been made possible by donations, gifts, legacies and sponsorships from community contributions, from communities like yours or mine? And as you've seen, each and every penny at Rachel House and Robin House as well as Chaz at home, is needed and well spent. Which is why any help at all, big or small, whether it be a gift of money or your time, can make such a big difference. You may have been, as I was, slightly apprehensive about visiting a children's hospice. And you might have had the notion, as I did, that children's hospices were somewhat sad places. But actually, nothing could be further from the truth. Robin House, Rachel House and Chaz at home are about improving the quality of life, their vibrant, life-affirming retreats. They're wonderfully enriching celebrations of every child and young person's potential and of life itself, however short it may be. The hospices make sure that every moment of life counts by creating memorable moments for each member of the family who use them. At both Robin House and Rachel House, as you turn around almost every corner, you'll sooner or later come across a drawing or a picture of a dragonfly. And there's a good reason. Dragonflies live a relatively short time, and when they magically emerge from their clumsy infant state, there can be no turning back. They have to fly away. But as they do, making their incredible journeys, those of us who cannot fly, those left behind, are always touched by their brilliance and are left with remarkable and lasting memories. I cannot think of a better metaphor for the wonderful work provided by Chaz. Thank you for your time.